live long and prosper. So in this video series, I'm going to be talking through the social justice elements of every episode of the original series of Star Trek. Um, the thing that inspired this project was actually a Fox News article which argued that Star Trek has in some way betrayed its traditional commitment to sort of political neutrality or middle ground by embracing progressive politics. In this series, we're going to see that Star Trek has always embraced progressive politics and it's always been aspirational for social justice in various senses. Um, I am taking a broad perspective on social justice here, um, so that may, that may include multiple different types of uh, social justice, whether that's racial, whether that's economic, whether that's religious, whether that's abilities, gender and sexuality, um, anything, anything broadly considered. Um, I will go through every episode. Some of the episodes I will, I will interview fellow Trekkies and talk with them about it. Um, and then below, uh, in the descriptions, I will give you additional information about the episodes, particularly uh, their original air date, who wrote the the, uh, the screenplay, and who uh, directed that episode. I also want to dedicate this series to my dad, Michael Allen Zapkin. Uh, he was an OG Trekkie from back in the day, and uh, it was watching the original series with him that I came to love Star Trek. In this video, we're going to talk about the episode, The Enemy Within. Now, basically, this is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde adaptation. Um, there is a transporter malfunction as Kirk is beaming up to the ship from a planet where it gets super, super, super cold at night, like 170 some degrees below zero. Uh, Kirk is beaming up to the ship. He comes through, but then a second Kirk comes through. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I Frank. And then, so basically, what we find out is that because geological technician Fisher had beamed up slightly before and his uniform was covered with this magnetic ore that was on the planet, that contributed to a transporter malfunction that divided Kirk between a good half and an evil half. So we have Jekyll Kirk and we have Hyde Kirk. Um, Jekyll Kirk is kind compassionate, rational, logical, but he lacks willpower, he lacks decisiveness, he lacks the ability to command, which is not really all that good for a starship captain, as you might reasonably guess. Hyde Kirk, by contrast, is extremely decisive, but he's basically id-driven. Uh, so... <clears throat> He is violent. He is rapey. Uh, he, the first thing he does literally on the ship is he goes to Dr. McCoy's sick bay and demands brandy, which he then drinks as he wanders at random through the hall before finding uh, himself at Janice Rand's quarters, who he then attempts to rape. We'll talk more about that. So, because it's a Jekyll and Hyde adaptation, there is inherently these sort of social justice themes about human behavior and how we regulate ourselves, what it means to be a responsible human being, while also having these, and I mean, again, this is a very sort of Freudian reading, but this idea that our instinctive drives, our id-driven self, would push us to have sex with everyone, to commit acts of violence, to eat all of the food, to do anything that we find pleasant, with no concern for any sort of repercussions. That's 
the pleasure principle. The pleasure principle in Freudian psychology is id-driven. But we have the reality principle, which is ego-driven. And this is not ego in the sense of egotism of, like, I'm the greatest, etc., etc. This is ego in the Freudian sense of the portion of the brain that says, here is what you actually need to do in reality to be a responsible human person. Um, and so we have those two elements. The One basic reading of the Jekyll and Hyde story and of the enemy within is that these two forces need to be balanced within a human being in order for that person to be not only psychologically or existentially complete, but in order for that person to be a an effective member of society. So not only do we need compassion and logic and the ability to see other people and to be concerned about other people, we also need strength of will, we need decisiveness, we need an ability to act when that is called for. But these two forces keep each other in check. Now, the more overt social justice aspect of this episode is the attempted rape of Janice Rand. Now, I don't necessarily care for Janice Rand as a character. I don't find her that interesting. I don't think she contributes that much necessarily. But she is often central as a kind of damsel in distress figure. We'll see that a couple of episodes from now with Miri, uh, for instance. But in The Enemy Within, Kirk, uh, Hyde Kirk, attempts to of use his position as captain combined with some very common sexual assault and abuse tactics. Uh, he, during this attempted rape, he asserts that Janice secretly wants to be raped. Uh, he asserts that she's forcing him to engage in these actions, etc., etc., um, and he use he attempts to use his authority as captain. That in itself is horrifically bad, like hard to understate how bad that shit is. We could understand that though, I think, because this is Hyde Kirk, and Hyde Kirk is an evil motherfucker. That, that's established pretty clearly and explicitly. So, evil Kirk is rapey. Given what we come to find out about Kirk with how many women he makes out with over the course of the show, this should not necessarily be a shock to us. But, what becomes more problematic, perhaps... No, I'm not going to say more problematic, but what, what compounds the problem is that when Janice is explaining what has happened to her, like she comes to the sick bay. When she is explaining what has happened to her with Hyde Kirk attempting to rape her, Jekyll Kirk is there taking part in the interrogation. Like that's fucked up. Like, you could say, yeah, there's two Kirks. They don't know that at this point. Like, they don't know that this transporter malfunction has split him into two. So that's worth, I guess, something. But the idea that the person she is accusing of attempting to rape her would get to ask her questions about this attempted rape is incredibly problematic particularly since that person is her superior officer. Like, this is what this is one of the big things, actually, with 
rape in the military is because of the military chain of command, where you take a complaint to your superior, if your superior is the one who has raped you, then that person, the person who raped you or attempted to rape you, gets to decide whether or not they will be investigated for rape or attempted rape. And that's a huge problem, because that rapist or attempted rapist has a vested interest in not invest, not having themselves investigated or prosecuted. So this is a big, big issue. The fact that Jekyll Kirk is there while Kirk, full stop there, while Kirk is being accused of attempted rape, that means that Janice inherently cannot be honest about what occurred. And actually, geological technician Fisher, who gets to make another appearance in the episode, uh, Hyde Kirk beats the shit out of him because he tries to intervene in this attempted rape. Geological technician Fisher is also like, yeah, Captain Kirk, you are the one who attempted to rape her and then beat the shit out of me. So, the fact that Kirk is involved in that line of inquiry means that that line of inquiry could not be reasonably trusted. Then, at the end of the episode, we've got some more fucked up shit that happens re related to this storyline. Jan, now, Kirk gets stuck back together, so we've got just proper Kirk again, with his decisiveness tempered by compassion, etc., etc. Janice comes up to him on the bridge and tries to say something. It's not entirely clear, but it does almost sound like she is apologizing, even though he attempted to rape her. And Kirk cuts her off partway through whatever it is that she's trying to say and is basically like, I understand, Yeoman. What? What do you understand, Kirk? Do you understand that you sh even though that was Hyde Kirk, you should be apologizing at the very, very least for attempting to rape this woman? Like, no, you don't get to be like, I accept your apology for me trying to rape you and you legitimately reporting that. So that's a fucked up bid. But then, Spock, in one of his least appealing moments as a character, goes over to Janice and is basically like, The evil Kirk had some appealing qualities, wouldn't you say, yeoman? Ha ha ha. No. He fucking attempted to rape her, dude. That's not appealing qualities. You don't get to be like, oh, he was an okay dude if you set aside the attempted rape. No, no, we're not going to play that game. Even for 1966. This is like this. There's a lot of things in Star Trek that I'm willing to be like 1966 to 68 was a different time. They looked at things differently. No, you don't get to be like, well, what a great guy, the person who attempted to rape you. No, you don't get to do this. Bad Star Trek. Naughty. Be better. Again, I know you will. 